Davey D hanging out with you this afternoon. And uh, as we all know, over the weekend, devastation took place in the country of Chile. 8.8 earthquake. Fortunately, that country uh, is used to having earthquakes, so they had uh, a lot of buildings. Um, that were able to withstand the, the, uh, the, this natural disaster. But it's still been de- very devastating for a lot of folks. Um, and one of our comrades, um, who is from Chile, you know them, they're, they're, they're no strangers to Hard Knock Radio. We're talking about the group Rebel Diaz, featuring uh, Rod Starr, who's on the phone line with us. Rod, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm over here in the studio with G1. Okay, so you with your brother. Yes, sir. Let me ask you, man, what did you think? Uh, when you got news of the uh, quake? Well, actually, when we got, the, the first thing, we, we were devastated because we just came back from there. We were there, um, you know, Rebel Diaz, us, me, G, and Latere were over there in Chile like a week ago. We just got back, um, and we had been out there. We were building with the people, with the young people, doing workshops, and, and the actual city that the, that the, the epicenter of is in, in Concepcion, in Chile, we have a, a, a huge hip hop community out there that had just held uh, a big uh, hip hop. It's called Conce Graph, and they did a mural about us, and they did a mural, you know, for us out there. And so it was just a shock. Um, and of course, the concern that, that that always happens when you have these natural disasters, the, the concern for our communities, um, you know, that you know, the basically as a result of what Chile's history is, you know, there's a lot of poor communities, a huge. You know disparity in the economic distribution. So, is yeah. it that way in Chile? Of course. I mean, that was, that was our first concern. You know, what I'm saying it was just like what's happening with our family and and what that means for the you know for the poor people of Chile. What this devastation. Means. Now, when I talked to you on um, the day after, a few hours afterwards, we were in the middle of the tsunami warning, and you hadn't heard from a lot of your family. Um, have you heard from those people that were missing since then? Um. Basically, we we finally got a hold of my grandfather, who was the main one we were most concerned about. He's 90, 90 years old. He lives by himself, you know, no internet or uh, cell phone. So we were very concerned about him. But, you know, it's Latin America, and there's, a, you know, the, the very practice of taking care of your neighbor is, you know, is happening out there. So people are helping each other out. The neighbors took my grandfather in and made sure he was okay. So we finally got a hold of him via a neighbor that had Facebook. Um but yeah, you know, more than anything, you know, we, we still have family in the city that supposedly they're saying is, is is 90% gone. So we're still waiting on hearing uh, from, you know, family from Curico. That's where my mother was born. So all her cousins and stuff like that, we still haven't heard from, no. Mm. So, you know, we just try to stay positive and, and uh, you know, be proactive. We're going to be having some events here at the at the Rebel Diaz Arts Collective here in the Bronx, hip hop for, uh, for Chile and... Uh, you know, let me ask you this. Um, there's always um, a politicized motivation when these types of things happen. Um, authors and you know activists like Naomi Klein talk us talk to us about the shock doctrine, and you know she talked about you know while people are in shock, watch the moves that they make. And we saw the type of uh, moves they've been making in Haiti. We've had people down there. Supplies weren't getting to folks. And it seems like it's just a takeover. What's the politics with Chile? Uh, Chile, And do we need to be worried about similar scenarios? Well, first of all, to understand the politics of Chile, we have to understand the history of, of, of what's happening. To understand the history, you have to look at the first September 11th, September 11th, 1973, uh, which is, you know, the beginning of a military dictatorship a bloody military dictatorship that for 17 years imposes a neoliberal economic model, right? And under that model, you know, basically there's privatization, uh, you know, the taking of resources, the taking of indigenous land, um, you know, multinational corporations coming in. Uh, so to understand the economy, you know, so we have to understand that Chile, for one, has a history of, of oppressors that are CIA and U.S. funded, um, and also, it's basically an, uh, an economic experiment, you know what I mean, of neoliberalism, which is basically capitalism, which is, you know, more privatization across, you know, more globalization, uh, and it's, it's a control. It's a control of the people. So when we see the earthquake hit, you know what I mean, for example, we see images now of supposed people, you know, Chilean people looting. You know, there's, there's a huge economic disparity. There's a huge, 
you know, history of that, and, and we're seeing the results of it. You know what I'm saying? For example, the highways that we saw crashing down, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the roads that were destroyed, a lot of those are, you know, roads that were built as final attempts, you know what I mean, by, by the last government uh, to try to look good. You know, so what do they do? They built highways with cheap materials, you know, because they did it through privatization. Um, they built... You know, how is it aren't standing? Some of these roads were built by the military dictatorship. Some of these roads in the south, these highways, were like, you know, the, 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 new, the new economy, the new model. You know what I mean? That's what Cheetah was being called, the, the tiger of the south, hmm. right? Because of this economy. And a lot of it, you know what I'm saying, like, like, like we're seeing, you know, is, is, is a farce. We're seeing these highways. It's a result of that. So, you know, well, well, our whole thing is that the, the, the history of Chile is a very unique one in the sense that it has been used as one of the first, uh, you know what I'm saying, models for neoliberalism, and it was used to a very bloody dictatorship, and dictatorships that were similar in the whole region, in Argentina and Brazil. Um, this, is, this is something that was going on. This is U.S. intervention in Latin America. These are examples of, of, of what we have. So a lot of people don't know that history. So when you see earthquakes like this, you know, it, it, it's, it's interesting, you know what I mean? Because, for example, like, when you have... Uh, a new president that's coming into power, you know what I mean? Let's not forget, 9-11 happens, and then you have an iron fist leader like George Bush come into power. Right now, we have an iron fist leader coming in, in, in the Sebastián Pineda, the new president that was elected, who's the right-wing president. Mm. So you have to have, I mean, it just, it, 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 now it's, it's understandable that there's militarization going on in the South. That there's a, right now the military troops were sent to the South to control people looting. Right. Mean, which is really people that don't have access to resources, much like we were seeing in Haiti. You know, there's there's even talk of them saying that their economy is strong enough that they don't need international assistance. Like our military's got this. That's what's saying. That's what's coming out from Chile. Wow. So while they're trying to stand, you know, have this strong image to the rest of the world, there's also a militarization of of indigenous land that's going on. Who are the people in the south? Who are the people that were hit by the epicenter of the earthquake? The people in Concepcion, in Talca, in Curicó, in some of the smaller towns. These are these are small. These, these are people from smaller towns, smaller communities, rural areas. These are Mapuche communities, indigenous communities that are being struck by this. That whose now their territories are being militarized. Um, so it's, it's it's interesting to see. So the, the, so, the, so it is kind of a land gr grab, except it's not a an, an external one; it's an internal one because it's already been supported by us. Pretty much. Wow. Pretty much. You know. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well. So we we we're, we're interested in seeing what comes out of this, what the response is, and also, you know, I'm, it's it's also interesting to see some of the the conversations that are going on on the social networks. Um. You know what I'm saying? Well, of, give us of, an of example. What, what, you know? what have you been seeing? You know, there's been a lot of people comparing Haiti, the situation of Haiti, to the situation in Chile. Um, you have the race issue being brought up, you know what I mean? Some of, of our, you know, other folks, you know what I'm saying, talking about addressing the situation from an outside perspective, you know, looking at it like, oh, well, you know, there's, there's not a lot of black people in Chile, so this is, a, you know, we shouldn't you know, worry about that. We should focus on Haiti. Or bringing up economy, you know, saying, oh, well, their economy's better, so this okay, we don't have to worry about Chile. Or other folks even, you know, bringing up, you know, differences like that that, are, you know, I feel are, are dividing conquer tactics being used at its best. So it's also interesting to see the responses um, and, and the dialogue that's brought up by a lot of the comments. You know Definitely. I mean? So, really, all, all we can say is we hope that people show solidarity um, from all over. You know that that uh, in Chile there's a history of resistance in our country. There's a history of struggle, and there's also a history of solidarity. Uh, you know, some of the Chilean uh, revolutionaries, you know, died in Bolivia with Che Guevara. Some Chilean revolutionaries, you know, what I'm saying, have been in Cuba, in Nicaragua, in Angola. Um, so, understanding that we have to learn our history and see the connection of our struggle. We also, you know, have to keep continuing having solidarity with Haiti uh, and, and continue, you know, the work being done to, and, and to understand the, the effects of, of what's happening, you know, in the world. And also continue working in solidarity with each other, you know, for the black and brown community.